Maybe it is my most difficult, one of my worst experiences uh, in UNICEF, uh, in the polio eradication program. In July 2012, it uh, was not my first visit for polio, but because my first visit as regional director for South Asia was to Afghanistan, and I, were, I went straight to the uh, Turkmen, the border, the Turkan border, uh, was still possible in Nangahar, that's no longer possible, but just to check on uh, both teams on both sides uh, on the polio eradication. There are some 25,000 border crossings every day just there. And I realized that it's another ball game. And then my second visit for polio as regional director, uh, I was still just brand new was to um, Karachi. I went to Gadab uh, 4 and um, my staff told me we had a visit here yesterday and uh, the road has changed between yesterday and today and they know that you're coming. So I said what changed and they said they made bumps in the road slows us down. Speed bumps? Yeah, speed bumps, uh, but they were handmade and it's different. So I had uh, close security uh, with me. Um, as usual, I was the only woman. Uh, they took me when I arrived to a kind of gutter uh, river, but it was so full of garbage that you couldn't see the water, only garbage, filth. And it became quickly very aggressive. And they said, uh, the community told me, bugger off. We are fed up with your vol polio vaccines. That's the only thing we get. We need school, we need toilets, we need health system. So I could feel this was a very um, aggressive environment. So um, I'm not so easily scared. So I went to the got up four. We went around. We saw houses, and then the women's group um, invited me to come inside. So my close protection were men. They were uh, they could not uh, enter. So I went alone, and I thought maybe it, it would be a more pleasant, uh, uh, constructive environment, but it wasn't. The women were very, very upset with the fact that they had zero basic services, only polio drops. And they said they would refuse to take polio drops. And these were mostly people who had migrated uh, from Afghanistan under the Soviet uh, uh, regime to um, uh, Karachi. So they've been there for a long time, almost two decades. They still didn't speak the language there. So they made me sit on the ground with uh, maybe, uh, I don't know, I have some pictures still of that event. Mm, 50 women in a small group. And at one point, uh, they started talking very loud. And a woman entered, and she had a big uh, red dress. And it crossed my mind. She's a suicide bomber. <laughs> and I had not much to say, because I was the only woman left. I could, uh, in a way, understand their anger. But because everything went through translation, it wasn't so easy for me to get uh, a connect with my with the people around me. So I stood up and I said, "Salam alaikum." Um, uh, that I had to go. That I uh, was not going to stay. But if they would wish that I would be available to come back, but then I would come back with a few more. And I would like then to also be, become prepared to see what else we can do to support the community. But at this moment, 
my, the purpose of my visit was for polio. So I left and um, my close protection outside said we should have never let you alone there. So we uh, went to the car, we drove, and the next day uh, there was these famous polio calls for um, uh, with WHO, Bruce Aylward, and with UNICEF uh, headquarters, and uh, I was on the line. While we had our conference call, I got time after time on my mobile phone, people were trying to call me, call me, call me. So I could see the phone ringing while I was doing a, a business call, Skype for Business uh, with the others. And I said, I have to take uh, the calls. And they had assassinated, killed the polio workers in Gadab for the same place where I had been 24 hours before. And I knew it. So that is something that up to date, that I think is not to be underestimated. The conditions under which the polio workers were doing their job with so little other things to offer. And I realized how different it was from my previous experience in India, where security was not an issue. I realized also that in India, um, there was also an understanding that the polio was not enough, that you need to do other basic services as well. And of course, this was also a particular group um, that was uh, for almost two decades hadn't gotten any, any basic service. So that is when in, in Pakistan, the polio workers started to be killed. And then, of course, in December 2012, in a stretch of, I think, nine days, 17 were killed. And um, I know we, we couldn't do anything about it. And of course, it's not an option to stop polio campaigns, but it makes you kind of um, with your back against the wall. And I realized that whatever we do, it will be different in Pakistan. It will be different in Afghanistan. So that's maybe where I differed a little bit because I always thought under these conditions with a total lack of security, uh, what are we asking of the polio workers? And what else can we do? And there were uh, also in Pakistan large areas, geographic areas where we basically had no access for a long time that, that was North and South Waziristan, uh, parts of Baluchistan, parts of uh, other parts of Fatah, and um, parts of Swat Valley, uh, and of course in Afghanistan also uh, uh, big parts. So um, yeah, it's difficult to say uh, what can what should have done but should have been done differently. But I think um, the pact between the partners should have been stronger, including with the governments, including with the local governments, and uh, in the case of Pakistan, including with the local uh, village organizations.